Hey guys, what is up? Shadowlands back for another review. Today I'm going to be doing my TPG1 Pro review for the second time. This was one of the very first sniper reviews I ever did along with the M107 CQSE. Uh, coincidentally, I'm recording this audio directly after I do my number two review of that. Um, now, I'm not particularly good with the TPG1 Pro like I used to be. If you guys have seen my old TPG review or you played with me about a year ago, this was the number one sniper I used. It was one of the only ones I ever even brought into matches. Um, I got good with this sniper, actually on Vertigo, before it stopped being popular. When the uh, when the map was first released, I got all over that map, got really good with the shotguns, then I figured, well, what if I try, uh, this is a really fail knife right here, by the way. Um, <laughs> that's a really fail knife. Uh, but at any rate, so, I got good with it there, and I really practiced on Vertigo. I put myself on the Alpha team, uh, the one that usually gets spawn raped, and I just used my sniper to defend my teammates, and I got good with it in Clan Wars. I got really addicted to using, uh, the sniper in Clan Wars on Vertigo. That was back when you used to see more than just Gravedigger Elim Pro in Clan Wars, so I really got into that. But that's where I learned to use this sniper, and it really has changed a lot, to be honest. This sniper has changed so much since it's released. I remember when it first came out, I looked at it and I was like, uh, I just got the, I just got a couple of other new snipers, I don't need a new one right now. But then I tried the GP variant, and I was like, oh my god, this is absolutely fantastic. I don't know why I didn't want to buy this sniper before. And in all honesty, the only reason I bought this sniper was because of the higher magnification scope, which I prefer for uh, longer ranges, and the fact that this sniper can kill one shot across Kill Creek, which the GP variant doesn't always do. You usually have to be more, uh, partway on the bridge or closer off the edge of the cliff to actually be able to get the one shot kill. Not saying you don't have to uh, uh, do that, but in all honesty, I have noticed that this gun typically killed a lot more uh, across Kill Creek than the other variant. Not to say that's necessarily true anymore. But this gun has ner been nerfed and unnerfed at least three times. The first time it came out, this was probably the most OP sniper in the game. The spread recovery was instantaneous, it was faster than the M24 series, and the spread overall was smaller. This guy just gets destroyed right there, no scope. Um, and also, you could consistently one-shot kill people across Kill Creek, which at the time, outside of Greyhammer, because I still don't know how big that map is, I've never played that map, um, outside of that map, Kill Creek was by far the largest with the longest sniping distance. This is long before Oil Rig came out, a solid year before Oil Rig came out. Um, so not a lot of big maps, and basically it was the one of the only few snipers with like the M107 that could actually consistently kill across Kill Creek. However, after that, it got nerfed horribly. The TPG1 Master was released, and it was the most OP thing in the world. Um, the spread recovery was instant, and it wasn't anything like it is today. Nowadays, the TPG-1 Pro, in my opinion, is better than the Masters because um, it has the much faster spread recovery. They're practically two different guns. The TPG-1 Pro and other TPG-1 cannot have a silencer on them. The reload is very quick. Um, actually, the Masters is too, so I guess that's actually not too different. But the spread recovery is much faster, and the overall spread is smaller. So that's just a big, big, that's a world of difference when you're looking at a sniper like this. This kind of sniper is meant to be an all-around sniper. It can accomplish multiple tasks. It has a high, it has a relatively high chance to one-shot across Kill Creek. I give it a 50% chance depending on uh, where you hit them and what kind of vest they're wearing. So I give it a 50-50 chance, but it's not a chance I'm usually willing to take, especially in competitive matches like Clan Wars where you don't usually get more than one shot. A lot of those matches are decided in a single shot from each side and whoever has the faster internet connection and the uh, better overall aim is just going to be the one that wins, and that's really about it. It's not even so much skill-oriented anymore. A lot of uh, clan wars these days on long-range maps just become who can quickscope better and who can uh, uh, fire better and, you know, just aim better at longer ranges, which honestly I'm pretty good at, uh, if I really had to say that myself. Um, but to be completely honest, I don't like quickscoping with this gun. I've seen lots of players who are absolutely fantastic with it and just beat the pants off every other player I've ever seen, and this is the only gun they use, this and the regular TPG-1. Oh, by the way, coincidentally, while I'm talking about quickscoping, keep in mind that the uh, um, regular TPG-1 has the L9 scope. It does not... That guy got kicked right before I killed him. But anyway, keep in mind that the, it has the L9 scope, whereas this gun has the obvious 4 times scope. A lot of times you'll hear me say, oh, it has the TPG-1 Pro scope. That's this little red crosshair scope that has become so popular recently. A lot of new snipers have this scope, excuse me, um, whereas a lot of other ones have the L9 scope. This scope and the L9 scope are the two most popular. I do believe this was the first sniper to have this kind of scope. If it wasn't, don't bother correcting me because I really don't care, but I do remember this was the first gun I remember seeing it on. 
um, unless I'm just missing something blatant, but I'm quite sure this is one of the first weapons to have this scope on it. It is a very, very small sniper, although it's very long. Like, the actual size of the sniper is quite small, but it's very long. It sticks to the train on Kill Creek by a very, very large amount. It's almost as long as the M200 Gilei. That is the only gun off the top of my head I can think that is actually longer. Um, can't think of a whole lot more than that. This gun is on sale for $30, and if I, like I said before, I will never understand how good, how people are so good with it for quick scoping because I can't do it for my life. I know this gun has fast spread recovery, but it just seems to be horrible for quick scoping for me, and despite the fact that you see me do it a lot in this video, um, just when I actually play matches, I believe I got pretty lucky during this match, and I relied a lot more on luck than I relied on skill. I don't know where that guy came from. He obviously, I didn't see him ever before. I actually checked that spot specifically too. But, um, sorry to get off topic there. But anyway, my point is, I don't normally do this well. I get very lucky for a lot of my quick scopes here, is what I would like to call it, because I'm, I don't usually do very well. If you look right there, I wasn't aiming anywhere near his head, yet I got a headshot. That's what I'm talking about. The point is, I get close to them, and I will aim at something, and I'll get a shot that doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, I didn't even aim anywhere near that area of him, so that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um... And I also rely a lot on no-scoping, because this gun actually is quite good for no-scoping. As I mentioned before, the spread is very, very small, even outside of scope, so this gun is actually quite reliable for quick-scoping, uh, sorry, for no-scoping, which appeals to some people, not particularly to me. I don't usually like to quick, uh, to no-scope very much, I do prefer quick-scoping, but I'm so bad at quick-scoping with this gun, just in general. You see me rely a lot on no-scoping during this video. I'm sorry I don't get a lot of footage of the long-range uh, use of this weapon, I only have oil rig footage, I'm not intent on doing any more recording with this gun. I've lost a lot of respect for this gun after it uh, lost a lot of its damage. The damage drop off went huge, uh, like I was saying earlier, you used to be able to kill one shot across Kill Creek with this weapon, no problem. That isn't quite so true anymore, it's dropped to like 50%, it used to be a solid 100% chance that you could kill someone, um, even at maximum range, and this gun's been nerfed many times since. Uh, and unnerved a few times. There was one point in time, I saved the ass off of that guy right there. The guy was glitched in the crane, and he killed me the, for my last death or death before, and then I saw that guy, that was a lucky quickscope. Um, <laughs> that was a really lucky quickscope, but anyway, um, that was more of just a complete lotto bot than actual aiming. Um, this is on Bravo too, by the way, if you guys are wondering. This actually is on Bravo. This is Bravo spread with the uh, no scoping and stuff, so just please keep that in mind. Some fail aim right here before I get killed. Um, and then anyway, so yeah, I saved that guy. It was pretty funny. Um, and he obviously didn't see him. He didn't, even, he didn't even realize that there was a guy glitched into the crane about to kill him. But it was actually pretty funny. I saw his leg behind him. I'm like, that was not my teammate that killed me. There has to be someone up there. He hasn't moved. Because uh, I was using the kill cam earlier to check around and see where he was. But anyway. Um, I don't have a lot to say about this weapon. Um, I don't like relying on this weapon for quick scoping very much. Um, it's not bad for close range, I like it for close range, but I just have other weapons I would rather use. The FRF2 appeals more to me, both because it, it performs similarly, but just feels to be easier to quick scope with, in my opinion. Also, I like the scope better for quick scoping. I don't like the scope very much for, uh, QSing, as I've mentioned in the past, just never really liked it very much. Also, this spot I'm camping in right here is the most underused spot in the entire world, that little white, uh, in between the white shelves there. I don't know why people don't use that spot, I've never seen anyone else besides me use it. I use it for sniping a lot because it's always unexpected and people never actually see me until it's too late. It's a very clever spot to camp. And it's definitely not peaking because I have actually seen a couple people use it and crouch down and their head is still visible and it is still quite visible to kill them. So I never understood that, but anyway. Um, back to the gun for a little bit. It does have a 4 times magnification for those of you who like that kind of stat. I'm trying to one-click this guy here and it doesn't go over very well so I just get pissed off and I walk in there and I slaughter him. Um, or no, wait, that was something later. Never mind, that guy kills me. Um, there's one, there's a point later where I do that again and I actually just destroy the guy. I think I have it recorded, I'm not 100% sure, but, anyway, I do want to compare this really fast, um, I don't think I ever actually went over the stats of this gun, which is kind of embarrassing. So, it has a damage of 100, a portability of 43, a rate of fire of 16, an accuracy of 98, and a recoil of 65. The damage, obviously, is only true for close range and sometimes long range, as I've said multiple times. The portability of 43 is pretty high for a sniper that has this kind of capability. It's a very much all-around sniper, it's very accurate, fast spread recovery, it has an accuracy general point of 98, which is just really, really high. Uh, usually anything 97 plus can be very, very uh, reliable at longer ranges. The rate of fire of 16 is one of the reasons this weapon is incredibly overused is because only, mostly semis have faster fire rates than that, and that guy just destroyed my ass, but anyway. 
The recoil of 65 doesn't matter, but it's quite average, so it's nothing super special. I am going to compare it quickly to the uh, TPG-1. This family is often uh, compared to the TRG-41 and the TRG series, so I'll compare it to that as well. The TPG-1 uh, has a, a two-point decrease in portability to 41, uh, and that's it. Literally everything else is the same. So, yeah. And I haven't noticed a lot of difference mo like in modern times with the damage drop-off. The TRG-41 is also exactly the same, has the exact same stats as the TPG-1 Pro. So, I mean, it is literally not different at all. I have never been able to notice a difference besides the sound. The spread recovery on the TPG-1 Pro seems to be a bit faster, and maybe that's the reason it's more used than the TRG. But if you really appreciate the gun and you like using it and you get good with it, there's not a whole huge amount of difference. And in all honesty, uh, having both of them would be plenty enough for me. Honestly, if I had both of them, I would be carrying around both of them quite a bit. Although, these days, I typically prefer to use my KNT and JNG. Uh, if I'm going to go in a quick scoping only match where they don't allow NX Epics or Rares, I typically will walk in with my uh, JNG and KNT. Uh, KNT with a Extended Magazine 2 and a JNG, in my opinion, are more reliable than the TPG and TRG series. Although, older fans typically prefer these, I prefer the more modern rifles just because they are actually better. If you watch my reviews on them and my comparison videos, I've used some gameplay videos to compare them, they are just better. Now, I will be putting out a TPG-1 versus uh, TRG-21 video quite soon. I've had it requested by many people, and I can understand why. They are so similar. Um, I still prefer the TPG-1. I'm going to say that right now. But it looks like I'm running out of time for this review, guys. Thank you guys for watching. This is the second TPG-1 Pro review that you've just finished watching, if you didn't hear the very beginning of the video. Uh, I do recommend this sniper. I actually will probably score it like an 8 of 10 or something. It's a great sniper. It's an all-around just useful gun. But it doesn't compete in any one category with a lot of other weapons. Uh, in the general category, it probably score first prize, though, to be completely honest. Um, just because of its popularity over the TRG-41. But like I said, that's about all I have time for uh, in this review, guys. Thank you for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Shadowlands out. And that one, given the intelligence of the people who watch this show, this is probably a good thing to teach. Because my guess is when they're not trying to operate heavy machinery with their butt cheeks, they're probably trying to do something stupid like this. I mean, what else could you possibly teach that would be as stupid as that? Even you can learn something from a sloth. Fuck this show!